Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome to Final Expense Telesales. My name is Dana Neeson. Today, I'm going to share three lessons for life that were taught to me by Simon Sinek. I shared these with my team this morning, and I want to share it with you. Hopefully, it'll put you in the right mindset to kick off your week. If you are just now finding this channel, thank you so much for being here. I run a telesales team for Tailored Legacy. We sell final expense insurance over the phone with one carrier. My job is to help you have stronger, more sophisticated sales conversations. And as you can see, I am working towards bringing you more mindset content because I think that is a very important part of being successful in sales. <laughs> All right, lesson number one is gonna start with a quick story of when my husband and his best friend decided to do a triathlon about 10 years ago. They had trained somewhat hard to get prepared for this. They swam every day, they rode their bikes, they ran, they really wanted to just muscle and power through it, and gosh darn it, they did. It was in Oceanside, California. They went to a the Ironman uh, triathlon and they finished it and boy when they were done they were exhausted and when they were done there was a long line of of racers who were wanting to get their little swag bag and in that swag bag contained you know not anything super crazy but it was a symbol of of an accomplishment it included things from the different vendors that were there some food a little hydration and one of them wanted to stay in the line and get it the other one only looked at the line and thought that is way too long i'm already exhausted i do not want to wait in that line to get the bag what's interesting about this is some people see what they want and they go after it and get it. Other people only see the thing that might prevent them from getting what they want. One person saw the goal, the end goal, the other person saw the obstacles in their way. If you're going after a goal, you might have to wait in line, AKA there will be obstacles holding you back from getting what you want, but will you have the patience, grit, and determination to stay there until you get it? Lesson number two is a history story. This goes back to the 18th century, 18th century in Europe when um, Pueblo fever was going around, also known as Black Death of Child Bed. And what was happening is women were passing away within 48 hours after giving childbirth. And this was happening more frequently, more often. It kept getting worse and worse. And during this time, the doctors were really trying to figure out what was wrong. How could they prevent this from happening or what was causing it? And so a big group of doctors spent the mornings doing autopsies of the women who had died um, after childbirth and then the rest of the day, they would deliver more babies. And it got so bad, in some hospitals, up to 70% of women who were giving birth were passing away. Until one of the doctors, one of the researchers, proposed the idea that when the doctors were doing these autopsies, they were not washing their hands or cleaning their equipment before then transitioning into giving, uh, into helping these women give birth. And doctors looked at this one researcher and, and laughed and criticized and said, you're crazy. And this continued for another 30 years, 30 years. Women continued to die after childbirth because nobody would stop and look at maybe they were causing this to happen. Over time, eventually, the doctors did have their aha moment, aha moment and did realize that if they just washed their hands and they sterilized their equipment, the death after childbirth rates diminished. So the lesson to this story is if you are not successful in what you're doing, maybe the problem starts with you. Maybe it's not the leads. Maybe it's not your script. Maybe you're the problem 
and you have to take a good look in the mirror and figure out what are you doing or not doing that's standing in your way from getting you the results that you're looking for. The final lesson comes from a group of Navy SEALs. And we all know that in order to become a Navy SEAL, you got to be a special type of person. And that is the one of the most elite group of warriors that I think most of us picture in our minds when we think of someone who has the qualities and the strength and the determination of what it takes to be a SEAL. So one of these SEALs were interviewed about exactly what does it take to be a SEAL. And the Navy SEAL answered the question, in the reverse, he said, well, let me start off by telling you who doesn't make it as a SEAL. And he started off by saying, the ones with the biggest muscles and the biggest egos, and they come in and they just think they have something to prove, those people never make it. Other groups of people that don't make it are college athletes, ones that were able to make it to a high level in athletics, but really never dug super deep to really figure out what they're made of. And they also think that they're better than what they really are. Those groups of people typically don't make it to be a SEAL either. And it's the ones that may surprise you. Even the skinny, scrawny ones who make it to become a SEAL make it because when they are at their lowest point and when they think they are both emotionally exhausted and physically exhausted and they are just spent and they could not go on anymore, not only do they persevere, but they also help the person that's struggling next to them. So they understand that they're not the only ones going through it and they reach out to help a companion to push forward and they push forward themselves. The lesson there is the world is tough. It absolutely is. You cannot think that you're strong enough or good enough to do it on your own without asking for help. There is power in offering help, but there's even more power in accepting the help. And knowing that you may not know better than the people that came before you. And to put your ego aside, do not think that you know best to take the tools and the resources that are offered to you and actually apply them so you get the results that you're looking for. I'm going to end today's video with one of my favorite clips from Simon Sinek. And I hope you put yourself into the right mindset that you need to to crush your week and crush the rest of your month. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the clip. The human brain cannot comprehend the negative. It is incapable. Yes, it's true. I'll give you an example. <laughs> I believe you. Just... Okay, no, no, I'll give you an example. You don't have to believe me. I'll prove it. I'll prove it. Okay, the human brain cannot comprehend the negative. You ready? Don't think of an elephant. Oh. Oh my yeah, I know. You can't, you can't tell the human brain not to do something, right? And so what happens is we very often reinforce things when we put things in the negative, right? I can't get apart. I can't get apart. I can't get apart, right? Or um, um, I can't do this versus I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep doing this. Right? Um, and and it's, it's such a huge thing to, to convert things into the affirmative. You're supposed to do it with children as well. We're supposed to say, we're, instead of saying to children, don't eat on the couch, we're supposed to say, eat at the table. Right? We tell people what we want them to do, not what, them, what we don't want to do. Pilots know this. Right? It is well known in the pilot community that when you tell a pilot, don't hit the obstacle, they'll hit the obstacle. Because what they're doing is focusing on the obstacle. Skiers know this. If, if you ever seen skiers go through trees, do you know how they do that? It's very easy. It's actually surprisingly easy. If you go through trees on skis and you go, don't hit a tree, don't hit a tree, don't hit a tree, guess what you're watching? You're only looking at trees. All you're doing is seeing trees. You don't understand how anyone can ski with all these trees. Right? 
as opposed to follow the snow, follow the path, follow the path. The only thing you see is the path. Skiers know this. If you say don't hit a tree, you'll hit a tree. You won't be able to find a path because all you see is millions of trees. Mm -hmm. If you say only follow the path, you, you actually don't see any trees. There's actually very sparse trees. There's plenty of path, there's plenty of snow. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing for you. If you focus on the obstacles, all you will see is obstacles. If you focus on the path through the trees, all you will see is path through the trees. It's your choice how you choose to perceive your own career. It's literally perspective. 